Well, welcome back, Blade fans. This old sword is with you once again. And here is a review I've been meaning to do for a few weeks. Had some interruptions. Uh, wanted to get to it sooner, and I was even thinking of putting this off just a bit because this old sword is a bit compromised these days. Uh, you'll see more of that in a moment. Had some surgery last week, uh, correct the longstanding uh, arthritic thumb issue. That's what happens when you use it a lot, and they call it wear and tear and all that good kind of stuff. Anyway, I'm on the mend, but I've still got the uh, surgical dressing on. I can use the fingers to some extent, but not the thumb so much. So I uh, wanted to explain that uh, when you see the blinding white bandage come into the scene. <laughs> and... We're going to do a reveal on this. Yes. This is a magnificent piece, uh, which I ordered from Morgan Cohen's of Cohen's Craft in Canada. And this he refers to as the neck biter sax. Look at this beauty. And uh, no, unfortunately, there is no sheath. So I couldn't pop it out of the sheath for you. Morgan does not make sheets, either leather or Kydex or what have you. Uh, he doesn't feel he's good at that, doesn't want to waste his time with that. So when you order a knife from him, uh, you do need to consider uh, who's going to make your sheath, whether you make your own or you get somebody else to make one. And I'll show you a couple of fine examples of sheaths that were made um, by uh, a couple other really good sheath makers. Anyway, let's talk about this piece. This is the Neckbiter Sex. I'm going to give you some dimensions, which I did ahead of time because I didn't want to fumble around in front of the camera with a tape measure and uh, risk getting surgery on uh, the other hand. <laughs> I will throw the uh, specs up on the screen while I read this, just so you know. So this beauty is 17.25 uh, inches overall. It's going to say 17 and a quarter, which it is. 12 inch blade, 4.7 millimeter blade thickness, which is 0 0.18 inches. A handle thickness of 0 0.75 inches. Sounds like a lot, but it is thin for this size. Machete thin in the handle. And the weight and I had to get another scale, my other scale, my postage scale, to weigh this because it maxed out my usual scale. This is a pound and a half, or exactly 21.5 ounces. There you have the specs, except for the fact that this is A2 steel. A2 steel. It's a uh, high carbon steel, an older used steel and uh, also it's often used in forging although this is stock removal and not forged so let's show you a little detail i think i'm already backed out enough i'm going to pick this up with the old wrapped hand so uh, there we have uh, what is in runic neck biter i believe there it is so uh, I think neck biter says a lot about its use. We have some nicely uh, designed uh, kind of a pattern along uh, what looks like a fuller, but really isn't a fuller, but we could call it a fuller because it sort of runs like one. We've got a swedge on top. We've got a compound grind on the blade with a finer or a lower bevel here and a little higher bevel here mostly for looks although you know this could be used for some close chopping whatnot it really is designed as kind of a uh, hand sword a war sword because a uh, very piercing point functions a little bit like a bowie buoy if you come from certain regions of the u.s and you prefer that name it is a rich light handle with brass screws the rich light has been textured by Morgan by hand with his Dremel. And then it has been stained kind of a copper 
look to give it kind of an older look, although uh, this particular one looks a little newer. He does that with the rich light. He's done it on a few different rich light knives. He's stained them and then sort of rubbed it off. And this may change over time with a little bit of handling. Uh, speaking of the handle, make sure I'm grabbing it safely here. Uh, we've got a lanyard hole. There's the brass screws. There is kind of a, a wedged pommel with a point. So it could be used uh, as for pommel strikes. And as I said, we've got a swedge that runs all the way along the top, all the way down to the point. And uh, we have, uh, here's where I could use this, right? Have a fairly fine point. I wouldn't say overly fine. Uh, the steel is very tough. It's going to take some abuse. Um, you know, I haven't spine whacked it to see if it'll fold. <laughs> I don't think it will. Oh, spine whack, spine whack, spine whack. Anyway, uh, won't even get into that today. Uh, he's left a very rough lined finish here, which uh, has turned out great. He uses a black oxide finish, and that's going to help with uh, corrosion resistance as well but also gives it kind of a uh, rough look, sort of like those grind lines there. All in all, it's just uh, extremely impressive. I think it's going to be even more impressive when uh, it gets a, uh, a covering, gets a sheath. So speaking of that, let's put it back in the picture here. Get my bandage out of the way. Don't want any on-screen accidents today. My surgeon won't like it if I mess up his work. Comes off next week. It's not a cast. It's just a, a wrapping. Um, but uh, here is another one called the Commando. Um, and uh, Black Bear Kydex in Maine did this wonderful sheath for it with the basket weave. Uh, Two-tone desert, uh, desert sand and black. Um, let's take a look at the commando. This one pushes off quite nicely. Uh, there you have the tiger stripes. And uh, this guy's about an eight inch blade. So, you know, if we compare, it's quite a bit shorter. Let's see if I can back out a bit more. Yeah, there we go. So <laughs> this, this commando was a big knife, right? By the way, you've got close to six inches handle on this one, about five and three quarters right up from here to here. So plenty to hang on to. And you've got a nice bird's beak. I call it a bird's beak over there, like uh, the Filipino style swords. But what an immense knife. I mean, it is a short machete, basically, or a, a good size uh, buoy bowie, if you, if you want to you know, use that for comparison. Uh, this one's a nice spear point with bayonet grind, fuller down the middle, beautifully done. Uh, and that came into my possession quite a while ago uh, from Morgan, probably uh, coming up around a year ago. And as I said, um, Black Bear did the Kydex. Uh, check them out if you need a sheath. Another one from Morgan with a sheath. He did not make, but this was made by Guster Leather, Peter Guster, out in Ohio. Uh, fantastic sheath out of like uh, eel skin and something else here. Um, he does just enormously great work. Uh, one of the best leather uh, smiths out there. I'm going to call him a smith. Maybe you should call him a maker. I don't know. Uh, but this is another Morgan Cohen's uh, design. This is a Fullard Tonto. This one sort of replicates one that I saw a picture of that I asked him to make with a bamboo style handle out of Coca Bolo. And we'll just kind of see if we can fit that in there for a size compare. That's got like a, I think, a, about a seven inch, maybe eight, inch, seven and a half inch ish blade on that one. Um, Nitro V on the Commando, Nitro V on this one, I believe. 
So he doesn't always work in uh, uh, high carbon steels that are not stainless. So he works a lot in Nitro V and uh, he'll do S35 VN. I've got quite a few uh, blades from Morgan, I think 10 in, in all. Um, we'll pull the compare knives out for a moment. Get them back in the sheaths. It's a little bit of a slow operation, so apologize for not just snapping things in and out here. But as I said, uh, don't want to have any accidents. And we won't say more accidents because uh, the hand's kind of a wear and tear thing from martial arts and over the years and uh, a little bit of inheritance from daddy with the uh, <laughs> arthritis. Beautiful fit on that Kydex, by the way, from Black Bear. So here we are again with the sex, and it is just, as I say, uh, quite a showpiece. I really, if I get a sheath, I, I seriously doubt that'll carry it too much or very much, but uh, it's possible I could. You never know. So the Neckbiter Sax, S E A X, um, a Norman or Viking sort of inspired blade with the, uh, the runes on the blade and so forth, uh, uh, ground in their hand, uh, etched, if you want to call it that, by Morgan Cohen's. And um, what else can I say? I can't, I have to say because I can't do too much. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed this review. Don't forget to give it a like. And if you are interested in or ordering anything from Morgan, uh, best way to reach him is on Instagram. I'm sorry if you don't have an Instagram account, but that is the primary way um, to reach out to him, to uh, view some of his work. Sometimes he'll pop something up there that'll last a day or two, and it's sold, not even a two day, maybe more like a, a, an hour's. Uh, but if you see something you like and you want to have him make something for you, he's uh, pretty quick in turning blades out, I'll, that much I'll say. And he ships them pretty quickly from Canada to anywhere in the U.S. Um, again, I've gotten 10 blades from him or so from Canada with no problems whatsoever crossing the border and all of that. Will you be well? Take care. I'll be back soon. And don't forget to give this vid a like, as I think I said. Take care.